Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Lynch. And I'm Dr. Tori McJunkin. On today's episode of The Pain Show, we're going to talk about low back pain and sciatica. If you'll show us the anatomy of what causes sciatica and what can cause back pain too. When a patient comes in to see us with low back pain, there's a lot of different causes. And it's our job as a pain management specialist to determine exactly where their pain's coming from. Now, the relevant anatomy here is we have vertebral bodies, and between each vertebral body is a disc. These discs, as you get older, can herniate out or degenerate. And when they do that, they can sometimes come into contact with the nerve roots. If they do that, then the nerve roots can cause pain that radiates into the back, the hip, and often into the leg. Now this radiating pain we call sciatica. That's called me mechanical irritation because you have mechanical forces pushing on the nerve root. You can also have chemical irritation and that's if a structure around here is irritated, it can irritate the adjacent structure or the nerve root causing sciatica type pain. And what we've actually found from research is the chemical irritation is probably the most common way to have irritation of the nerve root. And we have a treatment that treats that and that's called the epidural steroid injection. Epidural steroid injections have helped people with this kind of pain for over 50 years. There are a couple different ways to do the procedure. One of the ways is called an intralaminar epidural steroid injection. And what that means is a needle is placed right in the central portion here. When you uh, arrive at the epidural place, typically contrast medium is placed there to show that the medicine is the, in the right location and then a steroid medicine is placed. It goes in the epidural space and base the nerve roots that are irritated. The other way to do it is called a transforaminal epidural steroid injection. In this way, typically the needle is placed on the side and the medicine based directly on the adjacent nerve root and on the disc. Because of our specialized training in interventional pain management, we've learned how to, with x-ray guidance, deliver a long-acting steroid into the epidural space and this can sometimes give the patient excellent relief of their sciatic pain. Hi Mike, welcome to the pain show today. Uh, thank you for coming on. We're going to talk a little bit about the pain that you experienced, how long you experienced it, what it felt like, and then the treatment that you received and the results that you've had so far. Well, the pain that I had uh, started about three years ago mm -hmm. and uh, it was below the belt on the left side and uh, it progressively went down the leg a little bit further. Mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately it went to my toes. It was just terrible pain. Wow. Went to an ortho and he took some x-rays of my hip. He came back with the x-rays and he said, you are certainly a candidate for a, a hip replacement. I saw operation on TV of a hip replacement and I don't know, I'm a big boy, but I, it kind of scared me. It is scary, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. And uh, so I was just, basically procrastinating and mm -hmm. waiting until the ultimate time that I was either going to die or, or get this uh, thing fixed. And um, uh, I came here, I think it was in November of last year. Yeah, I, I had a pain probably of a 9, maybe even a 10. I couldn't walk. I couldn't uh, couldn't function. Uh, the only pain relief that I was able to achieve was laying in bed. So I was basically a vegetable. So when you had your office visits and you came to the doctors here, uh, what did the doctors discuss with you? What did they find? And I met with uh, quite a few of the doctors. Mm -hmm. and they, they, uh, the various doctors, they took different testimony from me as, sure. as to what my symptoms were said, well, you need an emergency MRI. Right. They had the MRI here. Right. I didn't right. have to go out to another That's nice. another place and get it done. Uh, the doctors here took uh, MRIs of my hips to verify or disclaim mm -hmm. uh, right. the hip problem, as well as, well as my uh, spinal column. Right. And uh, I was really impressed. It, it was a flatbed MRI mm -hmm. rather than the the tube, the tube yep, have a little right. bit of claustrophobic effect, sure. but the flat, it was great. The open MRI really open uh, MRI. worked for you, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So they came back and they said, well, it's not your hips. You have some arthritis buildup in the hips, but nothing to go to the extent of a hip replacement. Sure. And what you have, the, the lower two um, discs uh, at the very bottom, uh, they were pinching some nerves. When I was in, it was nine or ten pain. When I left after uh, chiropractic mm -hmm. procedures and um, 
very impressed with that. Uh, it was a pain of maybe three or a four. Wow, so it made a huge difference just in the first Tremendous day. Tremendous difference. So we ended up doing some uh, transframinal epidural steroid injections at yes. the lowest two levels, just like you mentioned, right. where the bulging discs were and the irritated nerves were. It seemed like uh, a minute later, I'm sure it wasn't that short, right. and maybe 10, 15 minutes. So it was a very thing. quick procedure. Very quick. For you, it wasn't really I didn't, painful. I didn't, I didn't feel a thing. Wow. Okay. Not a, well, that's, not a thing. that's very nice in yeah. itself. Yeah. And then how soon did you start feeling better from the epidural? Before I left here. Really? Yeah. So it was that sudden, just yeah. you felt better, right? You knew that we had yeah. hit the right spot and you were Not feeling good. Not to a zero, but you know, sure. it was a heck of a lot better than when I came in. Right. And I was able to walk faster than a, I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> I was w able to walk faster than an old, sure. old man. Right. What did your pain go to and how active did you become? Uh, right away or, or no, at let's the say, conclusion? Yeah. Yep, after conclusion. Oh, uh, I had a pain of zero. Wow. I mean, I could do the jig now if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fantastic. Right. I, Mike, thank you so much for coming on welcome. the uh, pain show and telling our viewers about your experience and just the uh, amazing outcome that you've had. And uh, I just really appreciate you and uh, just the fact that you've shared your story how severe the pain was and how you're uh, doing amazingly well right now. I feel like a younger person than I am right now. Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fifty percent of all working Americans will have back pain at some point during the year. Deskercise is a very popular topic right now and we're going to discuss that in a little more detail here. You know, simple stretches at the desk can help you strengthen your muscles and also alleviate injuries. The thing most people like about this is it's preventative medicine and it's simple to perform and most people can perform it during a day at work. We love talking about preventative medicine here on The Pain Show because it's the best way to keep you from having these painful syndromes that we treat every day. One way that you can practice desk size at work is the use of a huge ginormous ball. That's called the stability ball. Studies have shown that sitting on a stability ball one or two hours a day can strengthen your back and relieve pain. Thank you for watching this episode of The Pain Show. For more information, you can go to our website at ArizonaPain.com. You can also send us questions at PainShow at ArizonaPain.com. Thanks again for watching, and remember, at The Pain Show, we believe you can be pain-free. <laughs>